Kurt? Good morning. Today is uh, Tuesday, April 26th. The time is 9 o'clock. Uh, the board is in session to conduct its weekly open business meeting. All three commissioners are present. All of are with us. Please identify yourself. Daisy Lewis, Clerk's Office. Brad Smith, Sessor's Office. Welcome back. Deborah Phillips, Eddie County Operations. Bruce Crisco, Operations. Shana Roberts, Trash Billing. Triple Cola, WCA. Dara Barney, WCA. Tom Adi, Eddie County Zone Waste. John Bridge, Clerk's Office. Noah Hill, Procurement. Robin Sweeney, Procurement. Elizabeth Duncan, Communications. IT guy. Beth Mon, Treasure. Bob Perkins, Eddie County Procurement. Bob McCray, Assessor. Thank you. Got Thank you. folks on the bridge, too. Oh, yeah, we do have some, some uh, on the bridge. Excuse me. We have Robin Sweeney. We have uh, Stephanie Johnson, Noah Hill, and Bethany Cowley. All right? They're on the bridge, so they're officially with us. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any changes to the agenda? No, there are not. Okay, we have a motion to uh, remove the unfinished business from the, uh, from the table. Yes, Mr. Chair. I'll make a motion to remove the unfinished business from the table for consideration. I'll second that. Okay, you've heard the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We're going to uh, discuss an award of bid number 22054, Ada County Weed Pest and Mosquito Abatement Facility Backup Generator. Go ahead. Mr. Chair, Commissioners, uh, the evaluation team for bid 22054, the Ada County Weed Pest and Mosquito Abatement Facility Backup Gener Generator Replacement 2022 has reviewed the two bids submitted and would like to submit this letter uh, uh, with the evaluation team's recommendation. If you could read for the record. I'd be happy to. Thank you. A uh, letter dated April 26, 2022 to the Board of Ada County Commissioners from Ada County Procurement regarding bid 22054. Dear members of the board, after reviewing the two bids submitted, both bidders were substan substantially over budget. Therefore, it is the recommendation of the evaluation group to reject the two bids submitted for a bid 22054 and reassess options for this project. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chair. Yes. What are our options? <laughs> our options uh, we'd like to possibly go to open market on this one uh, to see and feel out the bidding community to see what is going on. We felt we were pretty healthy in that mm -hmm. bid, and um, we were missed it by a factor of two. So, wow. so we've had that some... was a year ago, though. Mm -hmm. We came up with that estimate a year to date, actually. Um, so that's yeah. that's another one of the problems. So this isn't the first backup generator um, in the last few months that have come before us, right? There's like three that we have. Other backup generators for other facilities. Mm, uh, we have projects for generators, but they're all going. This is the only one that's stumped us so far. But, yeah, but the other ones came in. We came in. Yeah, came in right. Budget, so it's just yeah. this one. Yeah. I'm okay. okay with that, so I'll make a motion. Okay. Go ahead and move to reject the bid submitted for bid 22054, 80 County Weed Pest and Mosquito Abatement Facility Backup Generator Replacement 2022, because they are all over budget. That's correct. Second that. Okay, you've heard the motion. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thanks, Commissioners. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We now have two resolutions uh, before us. Um, I'll open the public hearing on resolution number 2747, resolution adjusting the Ada County budget to reflect the receipt of unscheduled revenue to the Ada County Emergency Rental Assistance Consolidated Appropriation Act budget. Um, is there a discussion on, on, uh, on that resolution? Mr. Chair, um, the amount is uh, $5,209,618. Yes. And we do have it in the bank, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Don's like, yes, okay, it wouldn't be on there. <laughs> yes. All right. Do we have uh, uh, any discussion or a motion? Oh, I'll, wait a minute. I'll close the, uh, the public hearing on Resolution 2747. Yes, Mr. Chair, I move to approve Resolution 2747 as listed on the agenda. I'll second the motion. Thank you. You've heard the uh, the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I'll open the public hearing on Resolution 2748, a resolution to auction 10 vehicles from the Sheriff's Office. Uh, do we have discussion on the resolution? Probably a bunch of old Tahoes. 
Probably. <laughs> Mr. Chair, yes. Mr. Kinney, there are a few of the old Crown Vicks that the Sheriff's Office no, no longer needs, and a few other used vehicles that uh, are not needed anymore. So they'll be going to auction here soon. Okay. okay. All right. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing on resolution number 2748. It's a pleasure of the board. Well, Mr. Chair, I'll move to approve resolution number 2748 as listed on the agenda. Second that. Okay, you've heard the, uh, the motion. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, we're now moving to a proclamation. I'm going to ask uh, Commissioner Davidson to read the proclamation for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is the uh, Board of County Commissioners, Ada County, State of Idaho, Proclamation, Denim Day for Sexual Assault Awareness Month, April 27th, 2022. Whereas the United States government has declared April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and the Women and Children's Alliance has declared April 27th, 2022 as Denim Day, and whereas both events are intended to draw attention to the fact that rape and sexual assault remains a serious issue in our society, and whereas Sexual Assault Awareness Month and Denim Day were also instituted to call attention to misconceptions and misinformation about rape and sexual assault and the problem that many in society remain disturbingly uninformed with respect to issues of assault and forcible rape, and whereas wearing denim on April 27th underscores the message that the clothing of a man or woman wears can never be an excuse to be physically assaulted, whereas with proper education on the matter, there is compelling evidence that we can successfully reduce incidents of this alarming and psychologically damaging crime, and whereas the County of Ada is an important partner in the Women and Children's Alliance efforts to educate our community about the true impact of rape and sexual assault. Now, therefore, be it resolved, that the Board of Ada County Commissioners do hereby proclaim April 27, 2022 as Denim Day for Sexual Assault Awareness Month in the County of Ada and encourage all citizens to speak out against sexual assault and support local efforts to provide help and healing to victims of these crimes. Thank you. Okay. Uh is there any discussion? No, Mr. Chair, just wanted to make mention that um, Women and Children's Alliance has been around about 110 years, right, in our community, doing some really great work. They've got a 24-hour hotline, provide really valuable services. And so I was just going to check in to see if Dana or Drew wanted to maybe tell us a little bit about any events or anything you have going on and um, just educate us right here. Um, well, we're the WCA, obviously, and uh, we provide services for any survivor um, involved in sexual assault or domestic violence. Uh, we're here, we're uh, trying to be more out in the community, so we're very appreciative. And we have two hotlines, a sexual assault hotline and a domestic violence hotline that can be called at any time and is all over any marketing materials we have. So that's the first step. So. Come to us before you need us. And I think our own Jan Bennett's is on your board, correct? Yes. yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did you guys go to the Elizabeth Smart event? We did not, unfortunately. Yeah, it was fabulous. She's doing a great job being was, an advocate. I've read yeah. some of her books. So. Yeah, Commissioner Beck and I both attended that. And really appreciated what, yeah, what you guys do. Well, we're appreciative of what you guys do, and thank you for spending the time and highlighting the event. And we're denim tomorrow. We're in denim, yep. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mr. Chair, do yeah. you want to do a photo or anything we with Elizabeth? That. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hop up here. Okay. We can do that. Close the record. Okay. Can you pause it? How are you? Get right in front of here. Find the way. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Maybe I'll just reach out and do it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Perfect. We'll Thank probably you. put this on our Facebook page. Elizabeth, our information officer. And so Great. She's wonderful. Get, get a link to your group. Thank there. you so much. Oh, that was important. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. We have to pass You don't want to stay in this in the landfill? We have to pass the <laughs> first. All well, right. Uh, uh, before you leave, we'll do, we'll do the motion. <laughs> we need to have a motion. Yep. Well, I'll go ahead. Okay. I move to approve the proclamation as listed on the agenda and designate April 27, 2022 as Denim Day for Sexual Assault Awareness Month. I'll second that. Okay, thank you. You've heard the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Uh, we're now going to uh, open a few bids. Uh, the first bid is uh, bid number 22049, 80 County Landfill Liner Drain. Um, Bob. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, before you this morning, we do have three openings, the first of which is bid 22049, the Ada County Landfill NRC4 Liner Drain Gravel, and our bonfire procurement system is queued up there, and if you'd like, we'll proceed with the opening. Let's go ahead. Tom's so excited. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we'll be opening up a spreadsheet here shortly, and uh, we'll have the uh, name of the bidder and the uh, bid amount submitted for each of those bidders. So we can see the bidders right now, but the uh, spreadsheet will open up here shortly. really have some theme music going on. I know, right now. Dude, like the Jeopardy. <laughs> okay. Trucking company. Hmm. All right, so we have uh, the four bidders up there and the bid amounts. If you'd like, go ahead and read them into the record. Okay, go ahead. All right, we have uh, the first bidder is Kelly Pomeroy Trucking LLC, and they have a total bid amount of $1,673,500. Uh, second bidder is Knife River Corporation, and they have a total bid amount of $1,498,000. Uh, third is Lyle Reed Farms, LLC, and they have a, a bid amount of $1,737,845. And uh, fourth bidder is Sunrock Corporation, with a total bid amount of $1,412,500. So, Mr. Chair, yeah. Tom, is this so? Explain the whole process to us, not in detail, but I mean, for a million and a half, what this are we is getting the liner there? That goes on top of the liner so that water can drain down and get to the leachate sump so we can pump the leachate out. So, this is just gravel? Yep. This is, this is specifically washed and shaped drain gravel so that it won't clog and material won't get stuck in it so water can continue to drain. Okay, so we must be buying tons of it 40,000 40, cubic yards. 40,000 cubic yards. Okay. RC4 in the cell. It lines the entire bottom layer of the cell. That's a big pile of rocks. It yes, is. sir, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It will take some time for uh, this rock to be delivered. So okay. I think we're where, 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 where do they get that rock? Uh, it has to be, well, any gravel, they can do it, but they have to specifically wash it and round it so it won't catch material. So that's that's the reason it takes so oh, long. Oh, the round it. elbow. Yeah. Okay. I see. So they have to process it. Okay. What would be a good date? Uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioner Kenyon, uh, if we could table this for award to the uh, May 2nd, 2022 open business meeting. Sure. We'd appreciate it. I'll make that motion to table the award of bid 22049, 80 County Landfill, North Ravine South 4, liner drain gravel to May 2nd, 2022. Second. Okay. You've heard the motion. Uh, I'll favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. It's good. We've got four. Next one, we have RFP 22057, 80 County Ground Maintenance for Courthouse and Civic Plaza. Yes. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, we received one repos proposal for uh, RFP 22057, and uh, we have our bonfire procurement system ready to go. If you're ready, first, I'll Sure, let's go. Cool. 
And this is after we've separated them. Yes, the yes. Facilities. So this is, we have two bids. One will be for the first one of which is for the grounds maintenance for courthouse, and the mm -hmm. second one, which we'll get to hear shortly, is for the other the facilities. Others, yeah. So today we're just looking for the name of the proposer, and uh, that is ProCare Landscape Services. So they're our uh, sole proposer for this project. Okay. And we want you have to do, date? Same yeah. date? Uh, actually, we'll need a little more time on this one to uh, evaluate the proposal, and we'd like to request that this be tabled for final ranking and award consideration to the May 10th, 2022 Open Business Meeting. Okay, we move to table the final rankings and award recommendation for RFP 22057, 80 County Grounds, Grounds Maintenance for Courthouse and Civic Plaza Complex to May 10th, 2022. Second. Okay. <laughs> this will be funny if it's the same, only one on the next one and it's the same company. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've heard the motion. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Well, carries. All right. yeah. 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 Oh, oh, go ahead. I was going to say a drum roll for that. I know. So. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. we split with, you know, all the effort to split these up because it happened before. Yeah. Okay. Next one where we'll here get the opening for RFP 22058. Uh, Ada Ground Maintenance for Select Ada County Facilities. Go ahead, Bob. Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, we received uh, one proposal for RFP 22058. And uh, we'll go ahead and put. Uh, proceed with the opening of that. And like the uh, last RFP, we're just looking for the name of the proposer mm -hmm. and uh, should be popping up here in just a second. And there it is. Yeah. So the, the one proposer <laughs> for this, uh, for this project is all site and uh, We'll need a little time to uh, evaluate this proposal as well, and we would like to request that this be uh, tabled for final ranking and award consideration to the May 10th, 2022 Open Business Meeting. Okay. Okay, any discussion or motion? Mr. Chair, I move to table the final rankings and award recommendations of RFP 22058, Ada County Grounds Maintenance for Select Ada County Facilities 2022 to May 10th, 2022. I'll second that. Hey, you've heard the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. Appreciate Thanks. it. All right. All right. We now have a change order. Uh, change order number four, coroner's office replacement facility, agreement number 14570, increase $686,761.91. Um, is there any discussion on this change order? But, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, this is for the HEPA filtration system on the new coroner's project. We originally were going to use uh, ARPA funding for this, but due to the fact that we'd have to bid it as a separate project and bring in a, another contractor to interact with the current contractor, our warranties uh, for plumbing, electrical, um, and uh, HVAC would be in jeopardy uh, due to the fact that they have to hook on and connect to all, all of those systems. So uh, we did uh, this change order first and foremost is uh, currently funded um, with um, uh, value engineering that we did during the redesign and rebid of the project. So we uh, have enough money to cover the costs of this. Now we have one more change order coming for the generators and that is going to be covered by master facility funds that were moved into the project. Okay. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes. So the generator couldn't be paid for with ARPA funding as well? Same same issue? No. It doesn't uh, seem like it'd be. Our, our legal uh, department's interpretation of ARPA uh, does not allow for the payment of generators or funding for generators. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll accept a motion. Yes, Mr. Chair, move to approve change order number four for the coroner's office replacement facility as listed on the agenda. Authorize the chair to send documents on behalf of the board. Okay, do we have a second for that motion? I'll second that. All right, any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, now we have uh, licenses. Uh, and we'll begin with a peddler's license. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Just to add a little information, since last week we had a couple of licenses on Daisy's here as well, in case there's any questions. Um, these are the same company, just a couple more. These ones have been reviewed, and these ones are, are good to go. We have a couple others that are being kind of held up. Uh, Commissioner, Andy, you had asked about there was an infraction issued to one of the individuals, so we've ran that to legal. I mean, it is just an infraction, you know, so the uh, sheriff's office had cited them for, um, for going around without a license, but hence why we're seeing all these licenses come through, too. I think that triggered it. These are the solar panels? Yeah, these solar panels, yeah. So all the same people, just one big company has people out okay. going door to door. <clears throat> okay. Did you want to say something? I'm good. Okay. Well, Mr. Chair, I'll move to approve to peddler solicitor licenses as listed on the agenda and authorize the chair to sign the appropriate documents on behalf of the board. I'll second that. Okay. You've heard the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Now we have several um, licenses. I'll entertain a motion. Yes, Mr. Chair, move to approve and ratify the renewal license previously signed by Commissioner Beck on 429-2022. As identified on the agenda, approve the remaining licenses as listed on the agenda, including four catering permits, two new licenses, and 56 license renewals, and authorize the chair to send documents on behalf of the board. And just for the record, it was actually 419-2022. And I'll second that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Is it 419? I have 429. Uh, okay. Good typo. Annie, yeah. Got it. Yeah, it's really yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, you've heard the motion. Uh, is there a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And now we have with us our distinguished clerk. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Um, seems like a broken record. Obviously, there's an election coming up quickly. Uh, the postcards that I mentioned last week did go out, so hopefully you got yours in the mail. Uh, they kind of hit Saturday, Monday-ish. Uh, so uh, we've gotten a really positive reception to those going out, so hopefully that helps inform people of where to go vote with all the changes coming up. Early voting is set to begin next Monday. Uh, so we are, um, today we're three exactly three weeks away. Um, the, counting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, things are well underway. Uh, Saul and the team have been doing a great job, and things have been going um, very smoothly. So uh, Trent is now out there at least two days a week, just full time out there. Probably going to be about three times. So, so I'll, he's handling a lot of trying to just make sure things go smoothly. I'm helping a little bit with some of the anomalies that are coming up. But when by that I mean we've got. Uh, some unique requests for poll watchers and things that we've never seen before. So we're working closely with the Secretary of State's office just to navigate those issues as we get ready for the election coming up. Those are one of the anomaly? Yep. So like, what are, what are those? The, the we've anomaly? always had some poll watchers. You know, we'll have a handful here or there. I think back in November we had a, a larger request for poll watchers. This election, uh, so far we haven't, but we've had someone actually request poll watchers at all of the early voting locations, which won't be a problem but also request watchers in the office while we're processing the absentee ballots. We, we, we've had observers. We're just making sure that we've got everything buttoned up legally and have been working with Lorna uh, on all of it. Yeah. Can people still uh, apply to be poll watchers or election judges or any other personnel? Yeah. Um, yes. I think we're in a good place, from what I'm told, in terms of poll workers. Uh, Mitch and crew seem pretty good. In terms of watchers, they have to be requested 12 days in advance by either a candidate or political party. Most of the time that comes like day 12 before the election. Um, but it, it has to, so for early voting, uh, we got the request last week because it has to be 12 days in advance of early voting beginning. And so that's where some of the clarity is just, we're going beyond just election day, which we've historically seen, right? And so, but I don't, I don't see any issues, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you have that trailer that you move around a little yep, bit? Yep, the that's one, that's one of the early voting. That is one of the locations. So if there's going to be poll watchers there, they have to be notified each day where it is. Well, we've got that. We've already been, we had that posted uh, right. it's for our, a while. It's so, our, okay. Yeah, right. so anyone who wants to vote or wants to watch, uh, that is uh, noted. 
Um, we do provide identification for all the poll watchers because law enforcement wants to know. Like, I mean, people are always curious, you know, if someone's there other than just voting purposes. Um, uh, but we will have the mobile voting unit specifically serving Star, you know, the outlying areas. I think it does one day in Southeast Boise and my, near Micron. Um, yeah, I, I, like I said, really things are going uh, smoothly in terms of the election. So I hope it just continues and hopefully we get good turnout for the election. Okay. Anything else for us? I don't think so at this point. All right. Thank you. Uh, Next up, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, I'll entertain a motion on the Claims Journal. I move to authorize payment of claims on the Claims Journal dated April 22nd, 2022. Second that. Okay, you've heard the motion. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, may I have a motion on the personnel actions? I move to approve the personnel actions as listed on the agenda and that the summary sheet remain on file in the Commissioner's office. Second that. Thank you for the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We have with us our distinguished assessor, Mr. Bob McQuaid. You got some good stuff for us? Well, let's find out. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I was here a week ago yesterday with my assessment briefing telling you what's going on, uh, the, the values and whatnot. And you had uh, three questions. And we've got that information. If you want to take a minute, Brad Smith could uh, respond to those three questions that you had and give you the information. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, one of the questions was how much property does the federal uh, government own within unincorporated Ada County? And I don't know if uh, I'll think you got the email, but basically there's 53.4% uh, of the county. And most of that's responsible because of BLM property, something on South property. So what's Interesting, and I don't. I didn't apologize. I didn't make copies, but I won't pass that through. But a little Ada County actually owns, and how much the federal government owns, and then even uh, some of the cities own properties within Ada County, like the waste treatment facility out south of town. But I can email a few copies of this, and then okay. additionally, there's another screenshot on there which shows uh, graphs. The second question was, how many? I believe it was you. Can't get to ask about homeowners exemptions and what percentage. Mm -hmm. And it's trending. Uh, years ago, we used to be about uh, seventy-five percent, and we're at seventy-eight percent now. So, uh, of total total properties have uh, the homestead exemption. Oh, so it's up. Yes, it's actually it yes, yeah, contrary down. to what you're saying, right. with all the investors and stuff coming, right. it's actually increasing. So, which I think is a good sign. Yeah, that's a good sign. And so, surprising because. Numbers that we've have been reported of it, there's a lot more people that are non owner occupied. Right, right. So it is so it is trending up just slightly. Seventy eight percent then. Yes, and it shows it on that piece of. That was the only one I had. I apologize. Um, and then the third question was in regards to Linder, uh, one of the new urban renewal districts. Uh, it's just on the other side, just to the south side of. Um, 10 mile, so that's a map there. And um, just that question came up, what location it was during the presentation that Bob did. So, and I'll, I'll email you copies of all this. All right. Too, so. Okay, any questions? All right, thank you. Go ahead. That's everything from the assessor's office this morning. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have one tax cancellation. Do we have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chair, move to approve. The tax cancellation is listed on the agenda, which includes one tax cancellation for 2021. Now authorize the chair to sign the documents on behalf of the board. Second. Okay. <clears throat> Heard the, uh, the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 We have with us our distinguished treasurer, Ms. Beth Mom. Do you have a good report for us? Um, or any report? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Um, pretty much business as usual for, in our office right now. You've heard plenty about investments from us for the last few weeks, so really <laughs> yes, nothing to add yeah. on that. So, no real report. Okay, well, good. All right, well, thank you. Okay, we, uh, Shara is here for a discussion on uh, the, the public services trash billing. Yeah, good morning, good Chair, morning. Commissioners. Um, as we begin to prepare FY23 budgets, I wanted to bring something um, in front of you for possible consideration. 
Um, every year, we certify unpaid residential trash service to property taxes. And as a result of that, we are continuing to collect money owed to your public services, and we cut them a small monthly check after Best Office has collected that and distributed it to our office. Um, we ran the reports last night, and it's actually down a little bit more. As of right now, we owe $1,735.61. Um, those are guaranteed funds, so we'll continue to, Best Office will continue to collect those. And then there's a small portion of $245.60 for commercial services, which we cannot certify commercial services to property taxes, so we would have to work with the collection agency um, to receive those funds. But we would like to suggest doing a final payment to Republic Services as a one-time check from our enterprise fund opposed to collecting these small portions for several more years, because we're still collecting back to 2019. No, actually, 17. So it can take quite a few years for us to bring this money in. So if it's not balanced at the end of the collection period, what if they owe us money back? I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Well, are we guaranteed to... It doesn't sound like we're guaranteed to collect the exact amount that we're going to pay them, right? Because one's commercial. We will, the, the residential, the $1,700, that yeah. is guaranteed funds. Yeah. But the $245 we would potentially eat out of our enterprise fund, unless we can work with the collection agency to get that money back. Okay. And probably we're going to save more than $245 by cutting one check versus <laughs> consistently having to do this right. every month. And we have a, a, year. a finance specialist in our office because now we have the hardened contract. They have to go through and they have to figure out what portion is, belongs to Republic and what's hardened certified funds. So this would just pull that out. And, okay, yeah. Sounds like Alternatively, we can continue to budget for the payoff amount, but it's getting to be such a small amount, I would recommend, if you guys are okay with it, to just cut them a final check. I'm good with it. I'm good with it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we need a motion or? No, just All right. a heads up, thumbs heads up. up. All right, good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sheriff. We have uh, uh, the minutes. I'll entertain a motion on the minutes. I move to approve the minutes as identified on the agenda and authorize the chair to sign the documents on behalf of the board. Second that. Okay, you've heard the motion. All in favor? Say aye. 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 We have the interim events uh, agreements um, and concessionaire agreements for Expo Idaho. I'll entertain a motion on those agreements. Well, Mr. Chair, I move to approve the four interim event agreements and two concessionaire agreements as listed on the agenda and authorize the chair to sign the documents on behalf of the board. Second that. Okay, you've heard the motion. All uh, in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we have the Parks and Waterways Barber Park Education and Event Center Agreement. We have five of them. Do I have a motion for those five? So Mr. Chang, move to approve the five Barber Park Education and Event Center Agreements as listed on the agenda and authorize the chair to sign the documents on behalf of the board. Second. You've heard the motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Now we have uh, a number of agreements. Uh, do we have any discussion on any of these agreements that we're going to be talking about? Well, Mr. Chair, this has come before at least me three times now for uh, approval of agreement with Ada County and Dottie the Clown, and I just wanted to clarify that that's not our corner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad for that clarification. Uh, I did notice the Dottie the Clown one. Okay. Do we have any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the 14 agreements as listed on the agenda and authorize the chair to sign the appropriate documents on behalf of the board. <clears throat> Do we have a second to the motion? I'll second that. Okay, uh, you've heard the motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. There's yeah. a note that just came in. Is that clarifying that it is, Dottie, the coroner? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> so, for the record. <laughs> we 
That's yeah. weird. I might go watch that then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, we uh, we had a request uh, this week from the governor's office. Uh, uh, the governor is going to declare a drought declaration, and he's ask each county in the area, the affected area, and the area that he's proposing a drought declaration for is every county south of the Salmon River. And so that includes Ada County, and he's he's asked every county to take this into consideration if we want to participate or not. And we've asked uh, Mr. Lombardo, is he here? He is not here, and he's requesting that uh, this be tabled, discussion be tabled legal, and he'll be here for that. Okay, we will then we will then discuss this in uh, in our legal uh, discussion because we need to determine if the county is going uh, if it's beneficial to the citizens of Ada County if we participate in that declaration or not. So, Mr. Chair, just for the record, so we'll go um, into executive session for legal advice. Um, however, then the board will go back into um, oh. open session to either make a decision or we might table it until after the call with the governor and his right. staff on Wednesday. And so I think we want to just make sure that we've talked to all the appropriate people before this board makes a decision to opt in or opt out. And we can do that. That's what we'll... So with that, uh, we'll be in recess. Mr. Chairman, I think you need to make a motion to table it. We do? Yeah. yeah. Before legal. I'll make, oh. a, all right. make sure. a motion to... Um, table the emergency potential emergency drought declaration uh, to open session after legal. I'll second that. Okay. Even motion. I don't ever say aye. 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 Okay. We're in recess. Good morning. Uh, today is Tuesday, uh, April 26th. The time is uh, 9 of 40. Uh, the Board of Commissioners, sitting as a Board of Emergency Medical Services District, is in session to conduct this weekly open uh, business meeting. All three commissioners are present. Also with us are Sean Rain, paramedics. Phil McGrain, clerk. Phil McGrain, the clerk. Okay, Madam Clerk, is there, are there any changes to the agenda? No, there are not. Okay, may I have a uh, motion on the claims journal? Mr. Chair, I move to authorize payment of claims as listed on the claims journal dated April 22nd, 2022, regarding EMS expenditures. Second that. You've heard the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I'll entertain a motion on personnel actions. actions. I move to approve the personnel action as listed on the agenda. And let the summary sheet remain on file in the commissioner's office. Second that. You've heard the motion. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Mr. Sean. Mr. Chair, commissioners, good morning. Um, I wanted to uh, first start off on the agenda. Um, 
bring back our, our access awards that we uh, gave to folks uh, at the last executive board meeting. Commissioner Kenyon asked that I bring that back to the board. And so um, I've got the first set of awards that I'd like to read into the record, if I may. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> the first award was an excellence award. So there are three types of awards, uh, an excellence award, a life-saving award, and a humanity award. Uh, that, that people can get in the access system. So this first one was an excellence award. Uh, the incident date was actually uh, December 1st of 2020. This one goes way back to uh, the vaccine clinic that we did. So the uh, staff that got the award were Amy Fuller, um, who is our logistics officer, Jenny Wing, our, one of our battalion chiefs, Jackie Cole, and... Um, Laurel Snight, which Laurel is actually an administrative assistant at the Boise Fire Department. Um, these folks worked extremely hard on the COVID vaccination clinic. These individuals went above and beyond for the colleague, for their colleagues and community, but also represent the values of Ada County paramedics and access. And so uh, if we didn't have these, these four individuals, we could not have put that vaccine clinic together. And if you can remember, we vaccinated not only all the access providers, but law enforcement, we vaccinated some judges. We did a lot of work out there. So that was a, a great award. The next one was a life-saving award. Um, this incident date was August 24th of 2021. The crews, uh, our, the Ada County crew specifically was Cliff Fine and John Fujina. On this one, Ada County paramedics and Eagle Fire responded to a 72-year-old patient with chest pain. Um, a STEMI or an ST elevation MI was called in the field and a cat, uh, the cath lab was notified. The patient did uh, code and, and it was a solid code save. So this person um, had a good outcome. Uh, another life-saving award from October 15th of 2021. Uh, this, uh, this was actually a Boise firefighter that uh, went into cardiac arrest while responding to a, a structure fire. Um, the, the folks from Ada County were Cameron Augustine and our battalion chief, Brandon LaRosa. We also, also had uh, Matthew Cota, who is now with the Eagle Fire Department. Uh, but they, uh, they worked this firefighter, and he's actually back on duty. He was uh, in cardiac arrest, so that was a great outcome. Wow. While fighting a fire. Well, yeah, he, uh, and it was on the way to the fire when they, they arrived at the fire, from what I understand, um, he was unconscious in the back of the fire truck and they, they pulled him out and he was in cardiac arrest. So, um, but he's back on the job now. So that's a, a great outcome. Uh, then we also have a life-saving award. Um, this one was back in December of 21. Don Ray and Michael Mepham uh, were dispatched to an OBGYN call and they had a breach presentation on a delivery. So a baby was coming out backwards and that's a pretty scary thing, uh, certainly for paramedics in the field. But the crew was calm, competent, and worked together extremely well to produce a good outcome for that patient, which is, that's pretty awesome. Great. Next one is another life-saving award. This is from February of 2022. Um, Jake Oven, which is, he's one of our battalion chiefs, uh, Samantha Butterfield, and uh, an employee who's no longer with Ada County Paramedics, Sheree Steider, responded to the port of a code blue in a vehicle on, on uh, the side of the road. Uh, they had, the fire department had to locate the car and identify the patient and start a treatment. Um, Dr. Cornett actually on this one said, excellent overall care. I do believe it, it was the swift response and early CPR that saved this man's life, so another good outcome. And then the final one from that set of uh, awards that were delivered, a life-saving award from March of this year, Mike Zinn and Dan Quintero uh, dispatched to a 96-year-old female with chest pain. She went into cardiac arrest two and a half minutes from the hospital, and they got return of spontaneous circulation, so they got her heart going again. Prior to moving into the hospital, it was another code safe. So that was the first set of awards that we gave at the access level. I do know that there's another one coming for the meeting on Thursday morning. We have one more to deliver. And, but that's a, a really good thing that we've been able to do for our access groups. Great. That's good. Mr. Chair? Yeah. Maybe it would be um, appropriate for the board to um, send out a letter with our thanks and gratitude and signature on it to these recipients. I think that would be a yeah, yeah, we can certainly get the list of names too. That's okay. right. Yeah. I think, yeah, just list of names to us. We'll send and if you could have right. Judy put that in just a, the board's process, no matter what board sitting here, I think that that's solely appropriate. Yeah, I love those be, folks. Yeah, that's okay. right, yeah. 
Okay, well good. Do you have any other updates for us? Uh, the only other update is uh, we announced on Thursday of last week that uh, we are uh, likely going to be moving our schedule to a rotating schedule starting January 1st. Um, really matching the number of hours that the fire department works. Uh, and the conundrum that uh, we face, and, and I think the board is well aware of this, is the way that we're funded. Um, we can give raises or we can increase the level of service, but we can't do both of them at the same time. So we really have spent the last seven months trying to figure out how we can do more with what we have today, because it's pretty obvious with the work that, that myself, the deputy chiefs, and even the attorneys have done for us that um, you know, the only option we have at this point is going out for a full supermajority vote of, uh, to get people raised their own taxes. And, uh, that's a, a long shot for certain. Not saying that that couldn't happen in the future, um, uh, but uh, this does a number of things. It, it's caused a fair amount of angst because we've been on the schedule that we're on today for the last 35 years. Uh, prior to that, we were on at what's called a 2448, so you work. 24 hours, you're off at 48, repeat. Um, this schedule is 24 on, 24 off, 24 on, 24 off, 24 on, four days off. It's the same number of hours as that previous schedule I mentioned, same number of hours the fire department works. Uh, most of the fire departments in the Valley were on the schedule that we're proposing, which is called a modified Kelly schedule. Um, and they all moved to a 4896. And we did take a look at that, uh, but 48 hours, in one setting is too much for, for certainly for ambulance crews to do. I, it's uh, one of the riskier shift schedules we could do. This does do a number of things. It brings the annual pay for a starting paramedic in today's dollars before whatever the COLA or merit and or merit the board gives for next year. Starting pay for a paramedic becomes $69,888, which is above uh, what Boise Fire's starting pay is for firefighters. So it, it brings us in line with them um, this is also moving EMTs to $15 an hour and then reflecting that through our pay scale of that $0.82 cent an hour raise for EMTs, advanced EMTs, paramedics, um, FTOs, captains. The only group that we weren't able to do that for were our battalion chiefs, but it put them really too far on the, the uh, higher side of the pay range. And so, um, but uh, we, uh, we've been out, myself and the deputy chiefs have been out meeting with crews and talking to the crews, um, trying to to settle down some of the angst. I, I, uh, uh, I know that we're going to have some people that uh, the schedule is just not going to work for them. and They're, they're probably going to leave the county. Um, but at this point in time, and I've said this to, to my command staff, and I've, I've said it to um, a number of people, I look in the future, if we don't do something now, three to five years, this department will go away. Um, we already had Meridian this year. Uh, proposing putting on two ambulances because we're not providing a level of service that is adequate out there. And I, I, I don't, frankly, don't blame them for being upset with the level of service out there. So it came down to, we looked at a lot of different options. We spent, like I said, the last seven months looking at all the different schedules available to us in the EMS field. And uh, this is the one that, that will be able to provide service in the future and, uh, you know, pay people. Uh, an annual salary that uh, is more commensurate with the, certainly the industry, um, but also the local fire departments. So um, this year we, we've lost a, a number of people to the fire departments. Uh, we started our academy in January, unable to fill the 12 vacancies that we had. Uh, we were only able to fill 10 of those. So, um, you know, I think a, a lot of people look at the starting pay and they realize very quickly that they can't afford to live here. So we had to make a change. So that's, uh, and we'll continue uh, messaging this and, and getting out and talking to folks in the, the coming weeks. But yeah. are you just having, are you just going out to each individual station? Or are you going to have groups come yeah, together? Yeah, right now we're going out to each individual station. We're eventually going to have either a, a set of town halls okay. so that we have smaller groups for discussion and then eventually a, a larger department meeting. Um, at uh, our larger department meeting, we sat down last fall, late last fall, and um, developed a new set of mission, vision, and values for the department. 
Um, but I wanted to get this, this body of work done before we really set the new vision for the department. Because I'll be honest with you, when I came back, the way that we're funded and with the growth that we've experienced in the county, it was difficult to have a vision without funding going behind it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, what, I knew that we couldn't stay the same. And, uh, you know, I, I, this does provide a path for us to move on in the future. So, any questions? No, go ahead. How is your Medicaid thing coming along? Are they going to have that ready to go? Yeah, we have our first meeting week after next with uh, uh, the Department of Medicaid. Um, and actually, it's going to be Director Jepson, um, the uh, uh, Medicaid director. So, the wheels are moving on that. Good. Yep. And then that'll be retroactive. Retroactive. Once, once they get yeah, if they can get the work done by the end of June, um, that'll go retroactive back to April 1st. If it's after July 1st, it would be set on July 1st, retroactive back to that date. So we're really going to push to get this done before June 30th. The consultant, the Fire Chiefs Association has hired, has done this before. So I, I don't think it's going to be a, a tremendous amount of work, but having not done that body work myself, um, that's up to the state Medicaid. So. And that would be a fairly big boost to your department of revenue. Yeah, we're looking at, at for the system, seven to eight million dollars. And just, uh, you know, what uh, we're talking about at the, and obviously this will be up to the elect officials on the executive board um, to approve it. But as the chiefs, we've been talking about first taking that money and, and paying for the things that we all pay for and access, mm -hmm. um, which will be the be biggest benefit beneficiary will be our department for that because we pay the most into access now. That would be the first step. The second thing would be identifying system-wide projects that we could do, whether that would be innovations in um, alternate response. Instead of sending a fire truck and an ambulance to everything, maybe we send a sedan or a pickup truck to these calls where we don't need um, you know, a full response, thereby you know, leaving our response network in place so that we can respond better. Um, equipment, you name it, with, you know, different projects. And then when we're done with that, um, we'll, we'll divvy that money up to the departments. And that'll be the, ex the next exercise is really figure out how we're going to distribute that money um, equitably to the different departments. I personally feel like we should get half of the money because we do each one of those p patients we're seeing, you know, but the fire department's all um, sharing a piece of that. So we'll just uh, we'll have that discussion as we move forward. All right. Well, thank you. Just keep us updated. Okay. Thank All you. right. All right. Any other discussion? Yeah. Hearing none. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be in recess. Right. Thank you.